I took the bus this morning. Nice. Okay. I'm begging you. Oh my god, I just realized what they put in this book is literally from Wikipedia. Like, I just wrote you, and it's the first three sentences oh. is the same, is the exact identical as this. <laughs> they, didn't even, they, didn't even look, they didn't even think about it, just copy and paste. I think Wikipedia has my wrong birth. I'm born in 43. I think Wikipedia says 42. Oh my Just God. so you know. Oh my God. They, I think they, they made a mistake. They are such error makers. Yep. Uh, so I think they have like. Um, it's the same exact thing. The first three lines of Wikipedia. So someone who made this is literally Google her name and it copy and paste this. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm playing. Okay, so Marco, if you want to hear yourself, this is optional, but I personally prefer to have it with the mic because I like to hear myself, but it's up to you. Put this on, you'll hear yourself, and me too. Oh, okay. So, is this radio? Um, this is a podcast, a video podcast. Oh, it's a video. Yeah, it's for Danielle Hampton. It's the woman, woman supplement of the Okay. Dance. Okay. How long is your interview? I think 15 minutes tops. Tops. Is there something I can do for you before? No, okay. Let's test the audio to test how it sounds. Hi, 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 hi. That's thing, one, two, three, four. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm so excited. Okay. Okay. Let's go. All right. Hi, I'm Lulu Romano, and this is the number one source for all things in the Hamptons. Today we have a very, I mean, to say a very special guest is almost undermining it. Today I have the pleasure, privilege, and honor to be in the same breathing space as Martha <laughs> Cooper. Uh, she is a photojournalist. She did a lot of photos of, sorry? Yeah, no. Oh, I'm sorry, good. it's the background. <laughs> we are still Keep at, going. we're still at the Southampton Arts Center right now, so there's a lot of background right now as the staff is kind of cleaning up the, uh, the, the venue. So Martha is a a photojournalist who pre predominantly did a lot of photos of graffiti in the 1970s and 80s, and she is with me right now today. We um, we have everything today in paper, right? Is that well, this show is about works on paper. So, of course, when we're talking about graffiti, we're talking about works on all kinds of surfaces, like trains and walls, but this show is about paper. So these pictures behind us are about... Um, they're really mostly about kids designing their graffiti and the, that graffiti that they're designing they would put on a different surface like what kind of surface a train <laughs> a train like well like a an illegal surface maybe uh. like my my interest in graffiti has to do often with um illegal surfaces mm -hmm. like Trains. Trains specifically. Is there trains? Um, trains are my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> is there a, an affinity with um, any trains? Like, is what's the reason? How did you get into trains? Why trains instead of boats or airplanes or any other form of transportation? Well, I would love to do airplanes, but <laughs> <laughs> um, in the 70s, in the late 70s, uh, graffiti writers started writing their names on trains, and they from the the Bronx, the trains would travel through Manhattan and into Brooklyn, and the writers in Brooklyn, the, the artists call themselves writers, could see their names on these trains. And I just love that idea, that, and, and they were embellishing their name, and they were writing their name with style. In fact, they don't like to call it graffiti, they like to call it style writing. And to me, the idea that these young mostly men, but a few women, had developed this art form uh, around their name uh, was fascinating. And that they were doing it for each other, they were not doing it to sell. And so 
you know, here we have, we have pictures here of um, kids who were, they were designing their name and, and graffiti has to do with letters. It has to do with the alphabet. And they were designing their name and they were putting it in, on paper. And that's why this show is about paper. Um, and that's... Martha, please excuse me. I'm going to take a little crumb of your... Oh, it's okay, please. <laughs> we don't want any crumbs. On my we just want to look, you know, Hampton. Yes. <laughs> I don't want any crumbs because I was eating a pretzel. So you're from Philadelphia? Or no, I'm, no from, from, I'm originally from Baltimore. Baltimore, yes, I'm sorry, Baltimore. Baltimore but uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. and as is um, Roger Gassman. Roger, who, yes, the showrunner who put everything who together. curated right? the show. He's right there, speaking of Roger. Yes, Roger, <laughs> wearing an Oriole hat because mm -hmm. he's partial to the Baltimore Orioles, as mm -hmm. am I. Mm -hmm. um, Makes but sense. But I live in New York City now. Oh, gotcha. Whereabouts in the city? Uh, Upper West Side. Upper West. And what's your favorite part of New York City? Upper West. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how mm -hmm. blessed to live in your favorite part of yeah, New York. No, I mean, I've lived there since the 80s, and nice. I have a view of Riverside Park, and oh, I wow. love New York. I love New York. You know, mm -hmm. some people wear um, I love New York, like, T-shirts. And, and one time I was walking by this, I think it was in, like, Lower East Side. It was this window display of a shirt that says, you know, there's so many, like, popular shirts, like, I love New York, especially, like, in graffiti, too, like, I love New York. Yep. And that, this one was epic. It was, like, I love New York crossed out. And underneath it says, go love your own city. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. But my own city is, I consider New York my own city. Mm -mm -mm. Now. Do you think it's like a, a bar like after 20 years or 15 years or a certain amount of years that New York, you can say I am from New York? I would say that it's a city that is not for everybody, mm. um, that maybe you have to find your own way. But once you have, then, you, then you're allowed to say it. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the city, what about the Hamptons? Do you have a favorite part of the Hamptons? You know, I haven't spent much time in the Hamptons. Maybe this is my first trip to Southampton. What? Yeah, no, welcome. Of all these in all these years, and I'm a, and I'm really impressed with this Southampton Art Center. It's mm -hmm. unbelievably beautiful, mm -hmm. and I think that Roger did an amazing job. And it's just an, it's an incredible venue. Mm -hmm. Question: When you started to do like photos and stuff in in the seventies, I mean, did you start in the seventies or did you just get known in the seventies? No, I I would say the late '70s. Mm -hmm. I was um, I was a newspaper photographer for the New York Post and yep. traveling around the city a lot, and I saw a lot of things, and I got interested in graffiti. Do you think, or I mean, not think, but did you personally experience a difference being a woman journalist, a woman photographer, or was it not as um kind of uh, that way when during the eight, '80s and '70s and '80s? You know. There, there was a lot of resistance to a female photographer in the newspaper world. However, in the graffiti world, um, people were pretty much recognized by their skills, and my skill was photography, and I used to give the graffiti writers uh, photos of their works when I could get them on, you know, pictures of trains that they had painted, and so I think that I was able to enter that community because... Um, of my photographs and they didn't care whether I was a man or a woman. Was it kind of um, like something that was r more rare though as a woman photojournalist? A yeah, I mean there, yeah. there were not that many female photographers around at the time. Now this has completely changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, that now they're I would, equal numbers, I would say. And um, there were very, very few female graffiti writers. And Lady Pink was one of them. And Lady Pink is still out there today. Oh, still, wow. Painting, and she's amazing. So let's, like, big up to Lady Pink. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you done your own graffiti, too? Or you know, I once or twice I've tried graffiti and it is so difficult that anybody who um, doesn't quite get a bit spray painting should take a can of spray paint and try to paint their name <laughs> and see how extremely difficult it is it's extreme it's a very difficult medium to handle mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the graffiti writers really learned how to use this 
Can you tell us? Because mm, we're wrapping up now. Yes, you know, let's wrap can you up. tell us a little secret that, and no, I mean, nothing really is a secret, but something that like most people, well, most of the followers don't know, and that they will find out today when they watch, or maybe tomorrow when it comes out, they, like when they watch, like, oh my god, it's so cool, it's so interesting, that's, that's rad. Like, can you tell us? Can you share something that's not very well known to to people who kind of follow you and, and pay attention to your work? Um, I'm not sure I can. You know, what, who who knows what? I I will just say what what. I like about these pictures of graffiti writers uh, designing on paper is that I think people don't understand how carefully uh, the writers planned their graffiti. That what you see uh, on a wall or on a train is not a random act of vandalism. It's a carefully thought act, out act of vandalism. And that in order to maybe paint that wall or paint that train, you had to decide what colors you wanted to use and what design you wanted to use. And, and these writers made sketches of that beforehand. And to me, that was a fascinating fact to find <laughs> out and surprised me. When did you find out about that? Well, I, early on. Mm -hmm. and, and that was one of the things that intrigued me and one of the things that made me... Uh, want to pursue this because I understood I understood more that this there was an aesthetic that other graffiti writers understood and that the general public did not understand and the idea that they were creating young people mostly young boys were creating art for each other and not art to sell just it struck me as the purest form of art that is that is something you know guys viewers if you're watching this right now you can see more of Martha and actually hear her tomorrow night right here right yeah right, right here. here at right the here. parish art oh, I'm so sorry I'm, pardon, I'm so sorry the Southampton Arts Center um, and then tell us more about tell the viewers more about that as well as like the handles where they can find more of you you know your Instagram or maybe your email whatever yeah, go ahead yeah. uh, well come tomorrow night there's a uh, screening of a film made by an Australian filmmaker, a wonderful Australian filmmaker, Selena Miles, about me. Yay. Uh, Yay. And, and photographing graffiti and everything else. And my Instagram is at Martha Cooper Graham. Yay. And for those of you who are listening or watching, we will put everything down below in the description box to make it easier for you to find Martha. So thank you guys very much for watching this. And to follow more content like this, we can go to uh, the Daily Dose with Lulu Romano, link down below. And as well as this may make it to Dance Papers or Daniel Hamptons. It's one of those. Daniel, you know, do you know about Daniel Hamptons? No. It's the <laughs> supplement. Uh, it's a little sister I'll of find Dan. Out. It's like, instead of Dan, it's like Danielle. And it f focuses on, you know, fashion, fitness, and art, which is what okay. we're here for. Okay. Cool. Thank you again so much yeah, for your time. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, I'll see you Lovely tomorrow. to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Right, bye. bye. Ooh. You know what was cool about that? Like, there were so many people around us, but with the, with the headphones and stuff, it felt like, if, I don't know, just like for me, it felt like we were just in a little o oasis, and just the two of us, like. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about the other people. Oh my god. Okay, cool. We cool. did it. Yeah, very good. Oh. You, you function very well, even drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.